All right, guys, I think it's time to tackle something that seems to come up a lot of times in almost every one of our laptop videos, and that's the differences in terms of performance when the device is plugged in versus the moment you unplug and switch to battery mode. You see, in order to get the most apples to apples comparisons, we test all laptops plugged in, but that tends to only show how well they run in their best conditions at their highest output levels. Normally, that would be perfectly okay, especially when it comes to gaming, but as sizes and weights of those machines have come down a lot in the last few years, they aren't just desktop replacements anymore. You know, instead, we have all these amazing gaming laptops that can do a lot more without needing to be plugged in all the time. So knowing this, it was time for us to do a bit of digging and find out how a pretty typical gaming laptop fares between when it's plugged in and uh, when it's unplugged. So the entire team basically went into this thinking that it would be pretty straightforward, but um, <laughs> as we were doing our testing, we found out so many interesting things and I'm excited to share those with you guys. So what I wanted to cover here are things like overall performance on battery power, the effect that battery charging has on gaming, and also how the remaining battery life can impact things in a big, big way. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this isn't a video that's going to go over the obvious fact that you're going to lose performance when you switch things over to battery mode because manufacturers typically do put their limits to protect their batteries from prematurely failing. So we know what's going to happen. But rather, this is more about how much of a hit you're going to take and if there is some way to claw back some of that loss. So let's get into all of that right after a quick message from our sponsor. Meet the Viper VP4300, PCIe M.2, Gen 4x4 SSD from Patriot, available in one and two terabyte capacities. For all your data flow with, well, a five year warranty, of course. Uh, are we done? No, this cutting edge PCIe Gen 4x4 controller offers incredible read and write speeds and it comes with interchangeable low profile heat sinks to ensure compatibility in tight spaces. That explains this. Check out the Viper VP4300 down below. So the first thing I want to go over is this laptop that's sitting in front of me. Now, this is the Aorus 15G, and I do need to give Gigabyte a huge shout out for supporting this video by sending it and also hooking us up with a ton of information about some of the behavior we actually ended up seeing. Now, this is a pretty typical modern 15-inch gaming laptop in terms of size, though Aorus worked super hard to slim it down as much as possible without sacrificing performance. It's actually a perfect example of what I was talking about a few minutes ago. Manufacturers have been making their higher end laptops in sizes that are more adaptable in different situations rather than just gaming. Now, the specs aren't anything to laugh at either, guys. Our sample has got Intel's Core i7 10870H, 32 gigabytes of memory, and an RTX 3080 8 gigabyte GPU, making it one of the higher end specs and also maybe a worst case scenario for our tests. Now, another thing I do need to point out is that this laptop does feature full Wi-Fi 6 connectivity, which is a serious step forward for um, the range and bandwidth. You can also check out my video about that right over here. Now, there is a reason why I wanted to use this particular laptop for this video. It's one of the devices that features a massive 99 watt hour battery, which is the maximum allowable size for airplanes. So I was hoping this would really allow us to uh, put our expectations to the ultimate test. But first, I do need to quickly run through the options that Aorus has on their control center because there are tons of options and they actually have a pretty big impact on performance. So first up, there is the power setup that allows you to run five different modes uh, for the CPU and two for the GPU. Now these modes modulate power and fan noise. And on the CPU side, that means frequencies between 2.6 gigahertz in eco mode, all the way up to 3.35 gigahertz in boost uh, under an all core workload. Now, this is pretty much on par with every other gaming laptop these days. But with five modes, Aorus actually does allow a little bit more granularity and more options uh, to control the GPU and CPU individually. Speaking of the GPU, there are two modes here, which is maximum that averages about 14, 10 megahertz, and turbo that hits around 15, 15 megahertz. Look, regardless of the laptop that you're using, these presets are almost always overridden when the laptop detects that it's using an internal battery rather than an external power source. So that means there's not much user control over how things are going to play out uh, in battery mode. Now, the 15G does the same thing once you unplug it because all the settings are pretty much grayed out. But there is a bit of control in the manager section uh, with balanced. 
and high performance. I should also mention that Gigabyte did the right thing by implementing uh, the 15G with a dedicated GPU MUX switch, and that can be toggled right over here. So the first part of this little journey is to talk about raw performance. Like, what happens when you unplug this laptop and just start using it? Now, all these benchmarks were run with the laptop uh, starting at 100% and never going below 51%. And there is a reason for that, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Now, as you look at these results, they aren't that great if you want a quick burst of speed while on battery mode, especially if you didn't figure out there's more options than just balance mode. But the interesting thing here is that Gigabyte does allow you to squeeze a bit more from the 15G on battery with that high performance setting. It isn't quite back to plugged in numbers, but it bridges the gap nicely. But even then, things start to really fall off when the graphics card comes into play in Premiere and Resolve. I would never recommend anyone trying AAA titles when running on battery, and this is simply proof of that, guys. Frame rates fall right off a cliff, but there's something interesting here too. Regardless of the laptop being used, a lot of folks talk about stuttering when they're gaming on battery power, and that's what we're seeing here with 99 percentile in the balance settings. But, and this is important, guys, when running the 15G in its higher performance mode, things do open up a bit. But either way, it's a shame to see the Intel i7 10870H and RTX 3080 not being able to flex their muscles, because when it's plugged in, this thing can fly. But those improved benchmark numbers also lead to battery life taking a pretty big nosedive. I mean, the Aorus 15G actually gets pretty good battery life considering its high-end specs, but running intensive workloads pretty much defeats the purpose of using this as a mobile device. That goes especially for gaming. Now, just a little bit earlier, I did mention that I did not allow the battery to get under 51% when running the battery tests. And there is a reason for that. Uh, I'll explain that a bit as I run Cinebench in the high performance mode. So with a full battery, scores are pretty consistent regardless of how many times they run. You take a hit, but it isn't massive until the battery hits 50%. After that point, scores fall to just over 2,000 points, and then at 20% and less, uh, you're getting less than a third of the CPU's horsepower. So what's really happening here? Well, let's dive into things a bit further. With an all-core workload, the i7-10870H's clock speeds are pretty consistent at 3.1 gigahertz, right until that magical 50% point, and then they get cut back to 2.1 gigahertz, followed by another dip all the way down to just 800 megahertz further into the test as capacity hits 20%. GPU frequencies act a lot differently than the CPU. Instead of the normal ramp down at first, there's random times when speeds just tumble to about 200 megahertz, and that's exactly where those stutters happen. Then at 50% battery remaining, they become a lot more frequent. And finally, at 20%, there's even more clock speed bouncing literally every second, making it impossible to actually play most games, unless you're into turn-based strategy, but even simple animations become a stuttering mess. So you might be wondering why all of this is happening. And yes, there is an actual reason for that, other than just getting more runtime. You see, laptop manufacturers like Aorus understand that putting a battery under constant high load can drastically reduce the lifetime of the battery cells because the last thing that they or you want is to have premature wear that would quickly lead to a drop in overall battery capacity. We also can't forget that when they're being used, batteries generate heat, like a lot of heat, and that's the worst enemy for any PC component. So naturally, clock speeds have to be dialed back to compensate. Batteries also generate heat when they're being charged, and that leads me to something else that you need to be aware of. While overall performance drops when running off a battery, the inverse is true when charging, since you get right back to full performance the second you plug it back in, at least on the processor. But gaming is a whole other matter, guys. Since it chews up a lot more system power than just running the CPU through a multi-core workload, it looks like at lower capacity levels, Gigabyte prioritizes charging a bit more. Below 50%, you still get pretty good performance. And then above that, a little bit more, but don't expect maxed out frame rates until it's at 100%. The situation here is pretty straightforward too. When the laptop is under load, the power supply is actually forced to power the components while also recharging the battery. So something's gotta give. And nearly every laptop that we've tested has chosen to balance charging and performance 
rather than cutting one off entirely. I also need to mention that the Ortis 15G also behaves really well here since some laptops that we've seen actually cut back gaming and multi-core performance by almost 50% when charging, especially if the amount of power the components demand is closer to the power brick's maximum rating. But luckily enough, we've got enough to work with because it's a 230 watt adapter, so that's good. On the positive side, this will extend battery life and cell lifespan, but is there anything that can be done to get the absolute best when your laptop is in battery mode? Sure, but uh, does running in battery always equal to much lower performance? Not really, because there is some ways around to it, uh, provided that if your device actually supports them. The first of those is to simply run through all the power plants. So on the Aorus 15G, that meant diving a little bit further into the settings and finding the performance mode uh, or performance modes uh, exclusively meant to run off a of battery. And like we saw, while that didn't return the i7 10870Hs or RTX 3080s full potential, it did claw back some of the performance. Now, if your laptop doesn't have the ability to change power plants uh, in its control software, you can actually go through Windows power plants to check on a few settings. Now, on this laptop, um, there aren't any that'll drastically improve your performance since the Aorus control software sort of takes over from Windows. Uh, on the other hand, some laptops do have a lot more options where you can change individual settings for things like how the switchable graphics behaves and even the integrated GPU power states. So look out for those settings. And speaking of graphics, Nvidia's control panel also allows you to control the Optimus settings and manually set your preferred GPU. Now, while the Aorus 15G didn't have any trouble using the RTX 3080 when it's needed, even on battery power, some laptops do tend to cut back uh, to the integrated graphics. Just remember, turning the discrete GPU to always being on will have a massive impact on idle battery life. But uh, if your focus is only on playing games, then that would be one of the first places to start troubleshooting. But the 15G and a few other laptops on the market have a few tricks up their sleeve, and that's the integrated MUX switch that I talked about uh, just a little while ago. So this basically forces the system to completely bypass the integrated graphics and allows the RTX 3080 to work on its own way, passing its signal directly to the screen. It also increases the GPU's thermal and power headroom, in some cases, uh, even in battery mode. And the results are still aren't as good as when the system's plugged in, but this really is a good way to gain back a bunch of performance. But is this all really worth it? Well, it really depends on how you look at things. First of all, there's just no way that you should expect your laptop to get the best performance when using this thing on battery. I think that's pretty obvious. We all knew it. Um, as a matter of fact, the amount of power you lose can be really, really huge because it can turn a high-end gaming laptop into something that can barely match an Ultrabook. What I wasn't expecting is how variable gaming and productivity outputs get depending on how much battery you have left. I mean, the i7-10870H is a relatively power-efficient CPU based on the way how Aorus has set it up, but when you move below 50%, uh, it just completely gets kneecapped. On the other hand, if you do need the best performance in a pinch and if you want to do a little bit of gaming on battery, um, there are ways to help it, but the trade-off is that your battery life is just going to drain a lot faster. Either way, a lot of this behavior will depend from one laptop to the other, but I hope this understands or this helps you understand uh, how your laptop will behave when it gets unplugged. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was useful to some of you. In fact, if you're interested in this sort of content, let us know in the comments down below. And if you have any other content ideas that you want us to explore, I'm more than welcome to take a look at them. As always, thanks so much for watching. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.